Today, we've got our annual Average Joe and Sally episode where we invite a number of regular sellers of all levels from unique backgrounds. And these aren't influencers or service providers or trying to sell something. They're just regular people sharing their inspiring stories and strategies. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Whoever said good things come to those who wait probably didn't run an e-commerce business, especially not a global one. Now, when sellers want to expand to Europe and Canada, you probably noticed that the cost of conducting global transactions was complex, costly, and slow. Maybe you couldn't justify the expansion with the current solutions that are out there, but a lot of you have found Air Wallets. With Air Wallets, sellers have been able to open up multiple foreign currency accounts at the click of a button, easily connecting them to Amazon to collect in multiple currencies without being forced to convert, increasing margins by 5% or more. Air Wallets helps you simply go global, giving you control of how you accept, hold, and spend globally. From online payments to borderless cards, you can now focus on growing your business, selling in new markets at the click of a button without getting feed to death. I'd like to offer you the same wonderful experience that a lot of sellers have had. Sign up with Air Wallets at www.airwallets.com forward slash H10. That's www.air wallex.com forward slash h10 and get a $500 annual bonus. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's completely BS-free, unscripted, and unrehearsed organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. And as I mentioned, this is our annual episode where we call it the Average Joe and Sally episode, where we bring in just regular sellers. You know, these we, we love experts uh, out there. I'll never stop having experts on the show. But every year, one of the most popular episodes is where we just bring some average Joes and Sallys that are just regular people like you and I who, you know, might not have come from some amazing e-commerce background, but they had a dream to sell online and they're executing. Uh, some of these sellers are newer some of these sellers have been selling for years, but uh, we brought them on and this was uh, kind of like a, um, a webinar that we did. And so we took some excerpts from this webinar, Carrie and I, and we're just interviewing them, asking them, you know, how much money they've made online, what are some of the wins and losses they've had on their journey. And what I want you guys to do when you listen to their stories is see who you can relate to, whether you're a brand new seller yourself or an experienced seller. I'm hoping that you can find some motivation uh, listening to these real people with their real stories. So let's go ahead and hop into it with our first three guests. I'm uh, Richard Toops. I live in Bocchetti, Panama. I saw several Panama people flash through when uh, the room was opening up. And I built automobiles for a long time before I got involved with Amazon. So... Build automobiles. Like, what's that? Like, like, like you took broken down cars and then you rebuilt them or you built cars from scratch? Or what? No, built brand new uh, automobiles for General Motors. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Excellent. Uh, Gina, same, same, same questions. I'm Gina Perez. I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Um, I've actually been in e-commerce for almost 24 years now. So I've been in at least the online space for, for that period of time. And so that was e-commerce has kind of been the main, the main part of your life then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I started before people were even comfortable putting credit cards online, like in 98, you know, it was, it was novel concept back then. So it was learning. Everything was new every year. Something was new for the last 24 years. It's still happening. Something. New. All right. So here's somebody who actually did come from a, uh, e-commerce background. All right, Renee. Hi, I'm Renee Barron and I'm living now in celebration, Florida. And I worked for 30 years for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in contracting. Okay. Yeah, my, my, my um, I think my father was, um, was US, I mean, during Vietnam was a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I think he was stationed in Japan for that. So uh, interesting. All right. Now, next question. Um, like how long, how long have you been selling on Amazon itself, Richard? And then like overall, like what's the total you've, you've been your gross sales so far? So we started our uh, Amazon account in 2019 and uh, 
went through all of the the learning mistakes and and had a lot of uh, a lot of slow activity went out of stock uh, about the time the covid uh, you know the covid shutdown that happened we had uh, our largest order of inventory was held at the factory because uh, they shut shut the town down so uh, we've been uh, consistent since the middle of 2020 and in that year we sold about twenty five thousand dollars worth of, of product through our account with one product yeah. and uh just this year, since uh, January, uh, we're probably going to get close to double that. Um, but it's been a journey. Okay. All right. So, so it's like you've been selling for about you know two three years. Um, uh, doubling goal is to double your sales to fifty thousand. So you know, time wise, maybe not completely new, but but you're. You know, you're gradually uh, g getting up there uh, in sales. I like it. I like it. And what, what would you say, like, if I were to ask you for, you know, a 30-second strategy for everybody out there? It could be something about, you know, like, just, just like, you know, staying motivated. It could be something that that turned the corner for you, for your prop. could be about anything. What, what would, could be about living in Panama, taxes. I don't know. What, what What's your 30-second strategy for everybody out there? Well, the, the uh, most profoundly important thing for us is learning about Helium 10. And uh, there was a, almost a, a naive kind of an approach because back in the 90s, we had an eBay account. And we were doing, you know, different types of uh, attempts to sell online. But uh, until we begin to really get into how this works, uh, it, was, it was just going in a circle. So Helium 10 provided us a pathway to begin that process of working our way, <laughs> working our way out of that circle. And uh, once again, it's been a, you know, the, the journey part of it for us has been a ever, we're, we're learning something every week. So uh, that's been probably the most important single thing that I can think of. Okay. I like, I like it. And, and I especially like, you know, too, that, you know, um, you're no spring chicken like me, you know, as they say, you know, like, so there's no right or wrong age. You know, we, we've we got, uh, I think uh, Kevin on the AMPM podcast last week had somebody who started selling when he was 10 years old. You know, we, we have people, uh, Paul Miller started when he was like um, in his late sixties, I want to say, you know, so there's no right or wrong age to get started in e-commerce. That's another thing that, uh, that I love uh, about that. All right. Um, same questions for uh, Gina. So, for the Amazon side of things, now that you, since you started your own private label, I know you were in e-commerce, but like working for other companies, but since you had your own thing going, what would you say is your total gross sales that you've been doing and, and um, how long did it take you to become profitable if you are? Yeah. So with, with my, my own product, um, cause I did some test products on, on Amazon first to kind of get my feet under me and figure out how the process went. So I didn't, my first official sale on my own product was in April of 2020. And so nine months worth of sales, I was just shy of six figures. So, I mean, there's like a couple thousand that I was short. So I was going for the goal. But if I'd had the other, you know, months to, to of sales, then I probably would have hit it. And then over the next two years, um, I've seen an average of 55% growth year over year. So it's it's been good. Um, Very nice. Um, strategy for me, like I would say, um, because... I'm pretty much a, a one person show was I had to kind of impl implement the 80, 20 rule, not to just to, not just in advertising dollars or budgets, but in how I spent my time. So I just been, you know, most of my time on the 20% of the things, the projects or whatever that were going to benefit my business the most. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the one thing that I think uh, I knew that I didn't want to do, and it's just a, a, a headache for me was I found um, basically an accounting, a bookkeeping person agency that um, helped me get control of the books right off the bat. So I knew where profitability were, was, where expenses were, where um, anything that was or wasn't working, um, anomalies that were sticking out, having somebody like do all the work for me to just be able to look at reports, you know, because in my previous career, I'm, I'm used to looking at the, the flash report where I can see all the numbers and some BI person put it together and I can make decisions from there. 
me having to do all that and then look at it and make some analysis about it was is just kind of time consuming. You get lost in it. So yeah. hiring a, a bookkeeper and a CPA was was really like that, you know, uh, weight off my shoulders of okay, somebody's who knows what they're doing because there's all the expenses and stuff that come not just from Amazon, but you know, pulling data from Walmart, pulling data from any other channel that you sell on to make sure that all of your your P and L is in order so that you know where you need to cut if you're profitable, um, what what's working, what's not working, it just makes it so much easier. Um, so I'd say right off the bat, if you can kind of get your books in order instead of what I think a lot of people do is they they do all the marketing and selling first and then they come back and be like, oh, but you know, this little formula that I used at the beginning said I was going to be profitable, but I didn't account for business insurance and I had to buy a new computer and um, you know, legal fees, all these other things that people just don't account for. Um, yeah. That That's that's kind of what I, I banked on at the beginning. Okay. All right, excellent. Uh, Renee, what what about you? Um, how long you been selling? What what? How much have you sold? And, and what's uh, some advice you give for newer sellers uh, like yourself? Well, I have um, started in 2022. Got my product. I only have one product. 2022, and I've only sold about eight thousand total. Um, so a long long way to go. Brand new. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Now you three are all elite members. You know, so, sometimes people. People say, oh, hey, you know, elite members, you know, it's only for, you know, being nine figure, eight figure sellers, you know, but but you were uh, on the newer side, you know, in the last couple of years or even the last few months have started. So some people might be like, what, what in the world? How, why would a, a newer seller be a part of the elite program? So just really quick, 30 seconds or less, like Richard, what's your biggest benefit you're getting out of the um, being an elite, even though you're a, still a newer seller? The, uh, the depth of knowledge and the the uh, availability of the help that uh, that we've been able to get from the other elite members that uh, recognize, and that I think that was important that uh, right away they recognized what our question was, and so there wasn't a lot of uh, trial and error. You know, we were able to get specific help right away, and that made a big difference. I'd piggyback off of that too, because there's some spe specific things that go wrong for you that you may not have experience with and anybody and everybody on the call is willing to help. They may either have been through it or it's kind of a big think tank of how, how can you solve the problem? You know, try, try this or try that. Cause you know, again, not everybody works. It does, the solutions don't work for everybody whenever you're doing anything on Amazon. Um, but just being able to ask those questions of, of people that are not trying to sell you something is a big difference for me when you're trying to go to a consultant or an agency, you know, they want to have consulting hours or a plan. You kind of have a, um, a retainer with a whole bunch of sellers that either have been where you are or just great e-commerce people or great minds that are problem solvers together and, and kind of put some information together and try to solve your problem and help other people. You might have some input too that help other people solve their problems. Yeah. How has it been being an elite member? What, what, what benefit are you getting from that? Well, I just, uh, knocked it up to elite in november okay just and the first thing i heard was that you were having your quarterly um what do you call it? workshop out mm -hmm. at irvine california and so i just went i just went to that and i was just awestruck by the amount of knowledge in the room and the information we were being given and i just thought oh my gosh this is this is great um also you know as so i get on the round table with Kevin King. I get on the weekly, um, the weekly calls and I've just started taking advantage of, we can have a monthly call with both Carrie and Bradley and they just dive into whatever you're asking and such a lot of help. So it's the communication that I appreciate the knowledge that you, everybody is so happy to give me. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, Richard, uh, Gina and Renee, uh, thank you for joining us. And, you know, if one of you guys out there, you know, saw something or heard something that resonated with you, um, I hope you you know get inspired by them. Um, Richard and Renee haven't been on our podcast yet, but if you want to get more of Gina's life story, we actually had her on a podcast. You can go to h10.me forward slash 330, h10.me forward slash 330, and you can get more of Gina's life story and her journey in e-commerce. So you three, I thank you. Now, Carrie has got uh, our next three guests lined up. And those are Rebecca, Andrew, and uh, Abdul. Go ahead. What I want to do is just start and have you introduce yourself and then just let us know, you know, what you were doing before you started selling on, on Amazon. And um, I'll go ahead and start with Abdul. 
And, hey, yeah. Harry. Hi. So, uh, well, I'm still um, programming and testing software for the um, uh, international finance industry. So I haven't really left the nest yet. I'm still with that. All right. So you're you're kind of still in it. Very nice. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty common for most people. I'm I also have a job as well. <laughs> so um, all right. So we'll go to Rebecca. Like uh let's just go ahead and just introduce yourself. Um, maybe also say, you know, how long you've been selling and then what what job you had before you started selling. Hi, yes. Um, I've been selling for about two years now, maybe a little longer. I kind of had one product for a few months before that. And then before I've been a stay at home mom, really. So I've been out of the workforce in that capacity anyway, for about 15 years. Very nice. And you know, if anyone, anyone else is a stay at home mom, I've heard that moms get stuff done very well. So I think it's a good strategy to start selling on Amazon because you're just going to get stuff done and be efficient. So, um, all right. And then Andrew, how about you? Uh, how long have you been selling? And, you know, what was the job that you had before? Sure. Um, I've been selling since November, 2019 and job before, um, was I was a I did technical sales for uh, water treatment chemicals. So I'd drive around and uh, do some testing, but also do sales of uh, uh, water treatment chemicals. Very nice. So I, I love the diversity of jobs beforehand because it goes to show that you know anyone anyone can really you know start to learn this stuff. I think Andrew um, had the most boring of of, of the group. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine doing that. I've had, I've had like so many jobs in just the short amount of time I've been out of school. So it's like I make up for it in in creativity. I feel like. All right, <laughs> and then let's go ahead and talk about um, your gross sales and you know how much you've sold all time. So I've been selling since 2016. Um, at my peak, I hit. 60,000, 60K a month, which has gone down a bit for various reasons. Um, so I would say it's half of that now, around 30, 35 peaks to 40. But I'm pushing the envelope. Hopefully I'll be able to do more soon. Yeah, in 2021, I was about $180,000 in revenue and I was not profitable. Last year, I was 800,000 in revenue and I was profitable. And then this year, so far, January and February have been really good. I've been about double my numbers. From That's amazing. So. That's quite a bit of growth <laughs> growth in uh, <laughs> just a year or so, uh, two years. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, all right, Andrew, how about you? Sure. Um, first, the first year since I started in like November in, in 2019, my first year was like a huge grand total of 5,600 bucks. It was, you know, nothing too big. But um, last year, um, we finished up with 2.5 million. And uh, I think Amazing. total, total over from like 2019 to now is right, I think it's just short of 5 million. So very nice, very nice. Okay. Okay, so the next question I'd like to and I think you guys have some good stuff here is if you could give a 60 second strategy that you could share with the group. Um, uh, that you think has helped you or that you want to talk about um, that it would be helpful for everyone in the audience. Uh, I'll start with Abdul. Do you have one <laughs> in mind? Yeah, it's always uh, get back to your basics first before you mm -hmm. start doing advanced stuff. Make sure you, your customers are happy, uh, even if the annoying ones. We've uh, managed to give good service and we've turned one stars into five stars. So you really want those scores, your metrics uh, to be as high as possible. So um, I would just add, keep tight control of your inventory. And I always recalculate my margins. Every single freight shipment I get, uh, we bring out the uh, notepad and recalculate because the costs keep swinging, especially the uh, logistic cost. Yeah, I think that's really important because I think everyone's always looking for the next hack or how can I do this and that. But really, you know, if you do the basics and you focus on that firm foundation, you'll do well long term. I think that's a really good point. So thank you for sharing that. Um, all right, let's go to Rebecca. What do you think? What's, what's a, a 60 second strategy do you have to share? Um, I'd say your product is really important, what you choose. And one that has worked really well for me is one of my best sellers is just finding something that's not on Amazon already, but in a category that people are searching for. 
um, if that makes sense. So they're looking for it, but you're going to really stand out because it, it's not on Amazon yet. So yeah, really well. All right. Thank you. And then how about you, Andrew? Um, lately, since uh, everyone's been talking about chat GPT and stuff, I've been using chat GPT for um, I have it make Excel macros for me so I can like automate some of my PPC stuff. So that's kind of helped. And I think it can, I mean, it could automate in any computer language. So um, anything where you want some automation done, I would, I would play with uh, chat GPT and, and see what you can do. That's pretty awesome. There's a cu couple questions coming in for some of our guests here. Ah, I noticed. I so, so before we let them go, uh, like Lisa here had a question says, Rebecca, where do you find your products? Um, I'm a shopper, Lisa, so we're <laughs> <laughs> can pay off sometimes. So if I see something at anthropology, crate and barrel, um, or Etsy, even Etsy's easy or any of those places. Cause you can kind of see if things are selling, you know, if they say, Oh, sold out stuff like that, or Etsy has a bestseller. So anywhere really. Excellent. Excellent. And then um, another question, this could be for anybody who wants to answer. Uh, Mario was like, uh, can you give tips on how to get reviews for new products? So so all of you guys have launched products over the last couple of years. Um, is it just kind of like the bread and butter uh, works or you think one of you is doing something a little bit more special than another potentially? Or what is the bread and butter you do? Anybody want to take that? Maybe Abdul or Andrew? Yeah, I'll take that. Um, um... I have a good customer base that I've built. Um, I have um, many chat following. I have uh, email uh, blasts that I send out. Uh, oh, don't forget those insert cards. They're basic, but you include um, a little thank you note, uh, a little extended warranty. That goes a long way. Okay, excellent. Andrew, do you have anything for reviews that you're doing? You're just doing follow up, or what are you doing? Yeah, I just do follow up. Um... I'd say the best, the, I don't have a, a big community yet. That's one of the things I'm, I'm kind of working on. Um, but I just think selling a lot of units is the best way to, uh, to get reviews. Um, just kind of keep that in mind when you're launching a new product that you're going to have to keep the price low and, you know, for a certain amount of time until you get 20, 30, 40 reviews, and then you can, you know, start to get start to bring your price up and, you know, just kind of see what happens. All right, cool. Well, uh, Abdul, Rebecca, and uh, Andrew, thank you so much. I hope to see you, uh, each of you guys soon. I know a couple of you guys might be in Vegas for the uh, Prosper show, so I'll see you then. So thank you very much. All right, next group, we're going to invite up uh, Jake and Gonzalo and Elizabeth. All right, so Gonzalo, if you can just introduce yourself, where, where you're from and how long – You've been selling on uh, uh, on Amazon, and what did you do? What did you do before your Amazon life? I'm from Chile, uh, Latin America. I started on November 2019, and I was before this. I was a sales manager on Johnson and Johnson, in the personal care area, and then I tried a lot of things trying to start uh, a company as an entrepreneur. Okay. And what inspired you to get into e-commerce? Uh, actually, there was two companies that always called my attention. One was Amazon, and the second was Disney. It's Disney. I love them. Um, so, hi, my name is Elizabeth. Um, I'm originally from Nigeria. I live in um, Las Vegas. I've been selling on Amazon since 2018. And the last job that I had before then was a treasury um, analyst position. That doesn't sound like fun either, uh, too much. <laughs> That's a lot of numbers. <laughs> and so what, 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 what inspired you to, to, to get online, you know, start selling uh, online back in 2018? Yeah, so when I moved to um, the US at the time, um, I moved to Chicago, it was so cold. And I told my husband, I'm like, you want wait, wait, to hold, hold on, hold on. Wasn't it snowing in Vegas yesterday? Uh, um, I yeah, heard. On the, in the mountains, yeah, but not where. So you probably <laughs> thought you were back rain. in Chicago uh, <laughs> yeah. this last week in Vegas, right? Yeah, I know. So I was like, um, I can't do this cold and stuff like that. So we moved to Vegas. And unfortunately, I had to um, quit my job. And when I got to Vegas, it was so hard for me to find the type of job I was looking for. And then 
we realized that I was expecting our first baby. And my husband was like, you know what? I've heard of this Amazon thing. Can you take a look at it? I'm like, um, oh, okay. YouTube, Helium 10 um, um, group and all that stuff. And then I started doing my research. So that's how I got into um, Amazon. So our companies in Lee Summit, Missouri now, we actually just moved. So just outside the Kansas City area. Um, Mark started selling on Amazon, flipping used books back in like 2012, I think. I started with the company 2014-ish, early 2014, I think. <clears throat> so we, we've been here a little bit. Gonzalo, you know, from what, since you've been selling on Amazon, I think you said, uh, I forgot what you said already, 2020, 2019. How long, how much have you sold gross sales overall? Would you say, if you were to estimate? Uh, I think overall it's around a million dollars. Uh, but the, the, the important thing for me is I only have one product. So a million dollars from one product and just like some multiple variations, like some colors or something you have, Excellent. but just one core product is, is all you have. Yeah. What, what would you say has, has helped you get to that level? Cause that's not a level that a lot of people get to where with one product, they can sell a, a million dollars, you know, like a lot, there's a lot of million dollar sellers out there, but the majority probably sell multiple, you know, products. So was it just a matter of focus or, or what helped you uh, get there? No, I, I think I have the mentality that you can be profitable uh, since your first month. Uh, as I came uh, from a corporate mindset, um, you have to have to love of self-control, not spending on PPC more than you can afford, for example, and be extremely rational in your day-to-day -day control. Um, I think that there is... a uh, uh, also, an important thing that I always say, I, I, I don't know if I'm the typical guy selling on Amazon because I start from the product. Uh, I have a, an experience, an accident, and for that occurred that I, I figured out that everybody needs this product. So uh, when I got the product, I start selling on, on Amazon. So it's kind of different storytelling. Okay, okay. Now, what, what, you know, that was a strategy in itself, but maybe another strategy you can give out there about something that you think that you're doing that's unique, um, in, you know, that's unique for, that's helped you, uh, you know, get ahead. Maybe it's on PPC, maybe it's on, you know, a anything you want to talk about. Uh, I do a lot of social media. Um, I have my routine that includes, uh, Helium 10 every single day to check atomic profit, everything. So it's very methodic and also create new things on social media uh, every time you can. Speaking of TikTok, uh, Elizabeth, um, tell me about you. You, you, you actually found a product idea on TikTok once and then tell me like that one product <clears throat> in like two or three months, how much did you sell? I, I know it's some crazy story. <laughs> yeah that was like my euro product for last year um that product did over two million dollars for sure um in three months two million dollars in three months yep that escalated quickly so so <laughs> like like what you were just scrolling in tiktok or were you looking at certain hashtags or how did you even find that product um, fortunately I was just scrolling, um, on TikTok and just found the product. It just happened that it was right up my alley. It was, you know, um, within the niche that I was already selling in. So it was just easy for me to just hop on that and, you know, um, brought it onto Amazon because at the time the product was not on Amazon yet. So I was like the first person, um, to sell that product on Amazon. All right. And so the, that, that was just a couple months. Now, I, obviously, you're not selling $2 million every two months. But if no. you were to estimate how much money you've grossed on Amazon since you started, what, what would that be? About 20, 22 million for sure. Okay. Wow. So I would assume that's a little bit more money than you're making in Chicago or when you were, when you were living in Nigeria. Of course. I was making $150 a month um, back in Nigeria at the time. Wow. So definitely like. Um, huge difference. <laughs> there you go. Well, that, that I mean, that's not inspirational, guys. I don't know. I don't know what's what what is. All right, let, let's move on to uh to uh, Jake here. Now, Jake, what's um what's a, a strategy that 
has helped your company that you, you know, you work for, for selling on online where it's, you know, like help you level up, you know, whether it's something on PPC or whether it's something on your listing optimization, what would you say? Uh, we, we typically try to avoid a lot of fluff in our copy. Um, just kind what, of, what do you mean by fluff? Just a bunch of nonsensical words to force in keywords, I guess. Um, we try to make it easy to read. Otherwise people don't read it. Um, but the other thing we, we kind of try and keep it simple, you know, just make, make sure the math works. Cause it, you know, if you're looking at buying, you know, a widget for five bucks a unit, but don't consider the testing and all the fees and importing and all that other cost and labor, and then you have to get it to Amazon, like you can get upside down really, really quick. Um, it's, it, we, we try to always have an out, you know, it's just n- n- nothing super groundbreaking. <laughs> Um, you know, if we're, we're placing an order on a new product we're launching, you know, we'll kind of, depending on, you know, our cost, we'll, we'll look at how many we got to sell to at least break even. Um, just n- yeah. n- nothing super sexy. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Gonzalo. Thank you, Jake, for coming on here. All right. We got, only got two groups of people left. And our next group we are going to invite to the stage is Ahmed and Ryan and Rolando. Hello, name's Ryan uh, from Las Vegas, Nevada as well. Um, I've been selling online on Amazon since 2012. Very nice. All right, and then how about Rolando? I've been in the e-commerce game since 2002 and on Amazon since 2013. Very nice. Seasoned seller there. And how about you, Ahmed? For me, I I was living in China and recently moved from China. I, I was living... Yeah, I spent more than 10 years. Uh, um, I have a marketing agency and uh, I found myself in Amazon, let's let's say by, by luck. <laughs> and uh, uh, it has been one year, yeah, one year in, in Amazon business. Very nice. Awesome. Okay, so the next question is, um, what inspired you to get into e-commerce and um, what were you doing before selling? I think, uh, let's start with Ryan. Sure. So I actually graduated college in 2012. I started selling in 2012. It was actually a friend in college. He sold some textbooks online over the summer. And that's when I realized, holy crap, you can sell stuff on Amazon. So I uh, got involved on that. Very nice. And uh, so I, we went to the same university, a very nice uh, university, kind of expensive. Do you think it's uh, important for everyone to go to college or do you think you can do this without a college degree? <laughs> You, you can, the bottom line is you can do this. You can do a lot of things without a college degree. And I think the world's kind of shifting a little bit. Uh, I know it's kind of, the, it was the normal for people to look at your degree when you're hiring, but there's a lot, I don't know, you can do a lot without a degree. But I would say if you have the ability to go to college, definitely do that because of the experience you get and the people you meet and all of that is, is wonderful and not replaceable, but it's not required. Yeah. Um, awesome. Thank you. And let's go with, uh, Rolando. What hello, hello. You? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, before, um, being in the e-commerce game, I was working at, uh, Philip Morris, which most people know Marlboro craft foods. And I was, uh, in the packaged goods industry, knew nothing, zero about e-commerce, knew zero about Amazon at the time. Um, when I was there, I was there for about five years. Then, um, you know, two, early 2000s, everybody wanted to be in the tech game and friends were like getting, you know, bonuses and Porsches and money was flying around. So I thought, <laughs> I gotta, gotta get in on that, man. So I went in and worked for an electronics company. That's where I started. Oh, wow, the electronics is kind of fun. Then everything kind of collapsed. Uh, the telecom bubble burst. Uh, and then by sure luck, I decided, well, why don't I just sell a couple of these products right here and let her in my garage? Sure enough, instead of throwing them in landfill, I decided, well, just, I could probably do this. Move 10, four, 10 years later, um, go, got into Amazon. First year selling on Amazon, only sold $10,000 worth of product. And we were already profitable on our own website. Uh, and that was really, it's really like a goose egg because uh, we thought we'd sell to like, just like on our own website. Got to yeah. apply the new rules that Amazon has. So once we started doing that, things started taking off year number two, three, four, five, and so on. 
I think that's a good thing to call out because uh, some people get discouraged because their first year they didn't make a ton on Amazon. And same thing with me. We had like, we were selling like $200 a month or something. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you, no you figure it out over time and you learn and then you can, can grow. Do you have any kind of tips on that? Like taking it to the next level. If somebody's starting out, maybe their first year, they did just a little bit, like what kinds of things did you do to, to take it to the next level? Well, the first thing you got to do is find a way to clone yourself. And the scariest thing to do when you're starting is adding people because you don't trust people. You don't know if they're going to take your secrets and your in what you're building up. Um, and it took me a while to understand that. And I would definitely advise people that are starting out, find even a VA that can do some of the work for you somewhere, something, anything, because uh, the more you can peel off from your plate and let somebody else handle for you or outsource, the more you're going to be able to then dive in deeper and deeper and understand the business better and understand the customers better and understand how to market and understand how to YouTube. All right, guys, I'm going to have to hop in and cut it off right here because this episode is going too long. So we're going to come back with part two in just a couple of days. But let me know what you guys think so far. Who who did you connect with? Uh, you know, was it Rich, uh, who's, you know, a newer seller, or Renee, or perhaps uh, Elizabeth's story really inspired you? You know, that's the whole point of this episode is to show you that you don't have to be some e-commerce superstar in order to kind of like, you know, work towards your dreams of selling online. So I'm hoping that at least one of the guests today have inspired you. And in the next episode, we're going to continue on uh, with some of these guests and bring on some other ones who have collectively sold hundreds of millions of dollars. So I'll see you guys in the next episode.